Okay. Welcome to Kung Fu Havoc number two and Instagram. As I always say, honoring my word is everything. So I'm going to do some bound training. Hold on. I'm going to put this shit on top because it's so much easier to see that metal. Okay. So if you're here on Instagram and if you're here on YouTube, this is me from earlier honoring my word. Yeah, the hair is a little different. If you're on TikTok and you found me here on Instagram or YouTube, thank you for showing up. Okay, so first and foremost, let me introduce myself to the newbies. Not y'all here on Instagram, y'all know me. Y'all who are old on YouTube, you know me. But for those who don't know me, my name is James Williams Jr. I'm a man of multicultural ethnicity, still playing with the idea of building myself as just a Native American because I am part of Cherokee. And building myself as mixed hasn't really been working out for me in the 20 years that I've been in this business. So, what we're about to do is I'm going to honor my word and do a little bit of a demonstration of my hands bound. I'm going to give you this martial art instructional video so that you know that it can be done, whether you should do it or not, it's a whole nother ball game. You're going to have to formulate your own opinion. I'm going to highly recommend that you don't do it, but if you choose to do it, I don't want to be held responsible for your arms getting broken or you going to the hospital. So, strong disclaimer. If you do not have martial art training, this is not for you. You want to make a movie doing this? This can be for you. Because in the movies, everybody's taken care of. Everybody's part of a team. This is a proficient machine that is going to make sure that nobody gets hurt. As a real life martial artist, I will tell you that you can fight with your hands bound. I don't recommend it. Yes, I have done this before, not just in movies, but anyway, I've been training like this since I was about 12 years old because you just never know back in the day when I was taking martial arts versus the shit y'all do today. Alright, so rule number one, a good run is better than a bad stand when your hands are tied. If your hands are tied behind your back, I strongly recommend a good run versus a bad stand. I'm going to have to move this table. Okay, so now I have more space in case I have to do like axe kicks or crescent kicks and things like that. Which also, if you're going to actually practice what you see, you should probably do this outside, which I would be doing if it wasn't as cold as shit. If you have a gymnasium, which I don't have a gymnasium, if I had a place to go to actually film what I would like to do, I would be doing that. But I don't. So we're jumping over all that. So again, as I've made these videos before, I'm going to give you proper instructions on what to do. So the first thing you got to understand is that your hands are now one hand. Understand that. Not this way, just this way. Prayer hands. And the reason why I tell you to use prayer hands versus clasping your hands is because it's easier for you to break your metacarpals and your fingers when you're doing this kind of Optimus Prime Megatron shit. It's a good chance that you're going to break your fingers. It's a good chance you're going to break your fucking hands. But if you're doing prayer hands and you're basically pep slapping or bitch slapping or whatever, you got a less chance of um, breaking shit. Still going to hurt, but you got a less chance of breaking stuff. So, let me wave to this participant really, really quickly. Let me attempt to wave to... There we go. Okay. So, first and foremost, if your hands are tied, know this. It is highly possible that you can still fight. However, your situation may be a little bit different than training in a martial art film or making a martial art movie or... You know, most people are never going to be in a situation. All right? But if you are in a situation, nothing is impossible. All right? So what? Learning to block. We're going to go step by step because this is an in introduction tutorial type thing. All right? Or instructional video rather. We're going to go step by step with your blocks. I've done this before, so if you're not up to speed, you hopefully will be. You can go find more videos like this on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is also filming right now, which will be posted later on tonight when I jump into the Scarlet Spider suit or the Spider-Man 2099 suit 
but I do some shit for fun because I don't have to work tomorrow, but I do have a fuck ton of homework. So anyway, all right. First, your blocks are going to be high right, medium right, low right. But there's also another medium right that involves your knee. So that you can high right, medium right, low right. Now, what you just saw from this position, high right, medium right, low right, high right, medium right, low right. Now, the reason for that combination is really fucking self-explanatory. Sometimes when your hands are tied, you're not going to be strong enough to block with just your hands. So, your femur can work as well. You know, that thigh. And these are for kicks that are coming mid-range. Medium. Medium. You understand? Mid-range. Medium. I'm a short guy. I stand five foot three and a half. If you want to count the half, the army surely didn't. Which means by army standards, I'm only five three. Now, same thing on the left. High left. Medium left. Low left. High left. Medium left. Low left. Whatever you do on the right, you need to be able to do on the left. And since the world's predominantly right-handed, you probably want to work on your left side more than your right side. As any good sensei would tell you, turn your weakness into a strength and you will not know defeat. Of course, unless you are mentally disabled or physically disabled, there will be some hiccups in there that you'll have to work with. But only you know how your body works. It's a try to tighten this thing without gagging. I have a bad gag reflex. Anyway, so the closer your hands are bound, the more difficult it is. I have this much room. That's what I have to work with. Mm -hmm. I have been times where I've tied it like this. And having them behind your back is even worse. And if I think about it before this is over, we'll do that. But if your hands are behind your back, it is very good for you to understand that a good run is better than a bad stand. Any day of the week, if you can't fight, run. If you can fight a little bit, but it's better for you to run, you need to know the difference between the two. Always be aware of what is good for you in a situation that you are in. Because if you're not, you're going to get fucked up. I'm sorry. I couldn't put that any nicer. This video is clearly not for children. So let's start with the guy coming at you, running. He's right-handed. He's throwing a right punch, and that's going to be on your left. The simplest things can save you in this time of trouble. If he's at a fair enough distance where your leg is usable, you know, maintain the range. Now, if you're not good at fighting, this is for you. Inside to outside crescent kick, you're putting him in this direction and you're running in that direction. If he's coming for you on the right side and you decide to do the same thing, boom, you're putting him on the left side of his body, the right side of yours, which gives you the opportunity to shift your weight and take off. All right? Now, you're not going to do this. Okay? Now, I'm going to explain that. Right here, you're dead. Because you've taken your eye off your opponent. I'm sorry. It may not seem like that because it was a spinning back kick. You know, you may, not, you may think, hey, that shit could work. Not if he's moving too fast. If he's moving too fast, the reality is when you get right here, you're hit. That's the reality. Right? I don't give a damn who I just pissed off as a martial artist. The reality is simple. When you turn your back on your opponent, you have just dropped 45% of your defenses, which means if you can't recover, you get the finger. The middle one. Now, it's easier for you to sidestep and knee. Now, sidestepping and kneeing is great, but you need to also make sure that you are in a position to have a follow through. So if you sidestep and you knee, he bends over, you want to elbow him. If you don't want to elbow him, then you want to knee him and you want to run. Because it's the safest bet. So, same thing on this side. Boom! You're sidestepped and you need him. Now get out. Don't try to be a hero. Get the hell out. You know, he's, he's hurt. He can't breathe. Go. There's no need for you to do anything else. Again, learn the situation that you were in. Now, if there's more than one person, you may want to hurt this guy just so that that's one person down, you know. Especially if you're, like, trapped and you have to find your way out of a place, then you may want to hurt that guy because that gives you an opportunity to take out more people because you're down 
one guy. Now, if you got more than three or four guys, you know, you got some work to do. So, yeah, you need him, elbow him, knee him again. Now, the reason why I say knee him again is because it's a good chance that he may have a good recovery time. You don't want to give him a time to alert anyone else, so you want to take his ass out. All right? Now, let's break into uh, a block karate knee versus a kung fu knee. All right? So he's coming at you. I'm in a Wing Chun stance. I've blocked. I've grabbed. I've pulled. I've used Kung Fu because this knee is right there at him. Now, granted, my target might be a little off, but I'm pulling him into my knee. So when he hits this knee, he's going to be hurt. He's going to be hinged over. From there, I have options. Know what your options are. I've pulled him. I've kneed him. I still got a hold of him. I can take him to the ground. He's already halfway there. He's bent over. So I need him, I can pull him to the ground, I can break his arm from here. Even with my hands tied, I can break his arm. If you know how to do an arm bar, or a Fujiwara, or a Yuganagi, then you know you can break his fucking arm even if your hands are tied, because you know how to get him there. You can get him in a chicken wing where his arm is bent backwards. So you will be able to discombobulate or incapacitate your opponent. Alright? That was a Kung Fu knee. Now here's a karate knee. Karate is about power, where kung fu is about directness. So if you don't know how to directly get the guy in the kidney or the ribs with the kung fu knee, then you just want to hit him center mass in the belly, right there in the belly button, because it's going to still double him over unless this motherfucker has abs of steel. Then you got a problem and you're going to have to reevaluate your fucking fighting plan. But we're going to go to the karate knee now. You've blocked him. Now your father's knee away. You're going to pull and jab that knee. As you jab that knee, you're going to turn your hip. And you're going to roll that hip dead into his guts. Right here in the belly button. He's going to hinge over. You still have his arm. You can do some judo shit, but then you'd have to bring him back to a standing position. So fuck that shit. Well, he's already bent over. You've already need the shit out of him. You can elbow him because he's right there. When you elbow him, you want to elbow him in the back of this damn spot right here in the neck. Where your three big bones meet. Your shoulder blades and your neck be at the back. You want to elbow him right there because that is a crippling position. For those who took Kempo, you know what I'm talking about. For those who don't believe in pressure points, don't knock it till you try it. Alright? Kempo taught me a lot. Now, the reason why I decided to say use a Kempo elbow to the back of that spot is because it's more likely you're going to snap his fucking neck and your hands are tied. So you can't play with these people if you're in the situation where you've been kidnapped and they were dumb enough to tie your hands in front. Alright? So, Kung Fu knee, boom! Elbow. That, or escape. Karate knee, boom! Elbow. Or escape. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, if you have to, I highly recommend elbow, then escape. The easier you can incapacitate your opponent, the safer it is for you, especially if there's other opponents lurking around that you will have to take out. Now, they didn't teach me this shit in the Army. In the Army, I learned BJJ. But I learned all the martial arts stuff before I got into the Army, which was a blessing for me and a curse for me at the same time when we had to do BJJ in Delta. Now, there are other things you can do, so we're going to work on those, which we're just going to call these survival techniques versus it being karate or kung fu, all right? So you block and you pull short elbow, Okay? Why a short elbow? Maybe you don't have range of motion where you can get your karate knee. Maybe you don't have range of motion where you can get your kung fu knee. So you have to know how your body works. So you pull and short elbow because you block, grab, pull, short elbow. Right? The reason why it's a short elbow is because it's right there. It's self-explanatory. So he's over here. Boom. Boom. You know, so boom, pull, boom. Or boom and boom. So you just block an elbow, which is why I screwed up. So I'm going to recover myself and explain that I did screw up because I just boom and boom. Now, you can do that. But remember, he has another hand. But if you boom, boom, and boom, you pretty much got everything going. This is not a dance move. Zip it, dog. When you block and you pull, you have a better chance of putting the momentum on your side. And when you pull and you short elbow him or her, whoever you're fighting at the moment, you're going to aim at the sternum. Which should knock the wind out of them. Once you short elbow them, if you elbow them in the sternum, they're going to hinge over. 
then you can uppercut them to the face. Or when you short elbow them, you can elbow them again to the face. Right? Getting elbowed in the face, people, sucks. If you've never been elbowed in the face, if you've never been punched in the face, you have been blessed. I have been punched in the face a few times in my life. It does not feel good. Recovery is important. Know the ability of pain that you can take before you get into a fight. Zip it. It is not 11 o'clock yet. You are not my dog. So chill out. Now, the reason why if you block and short elbow, again, your range of motion, your body mechanics, and all these things are going to come into play. If you are not a great fighter, you want to end a fight quickly. Where if you are a fighter, you don't want to be overzealous and you want to end the fight quickly. Why is it so important to end the fight quickly, you may ask. Well, let me answer that question for you. My fucking hands are tied. How much duration do you think I'm going to have with my hands being tied? I don't have a lot of time to escape and I can't untie my hands. So if I pull and elbow you, and then I elbow you again, I'm going to end this fight as quickly as fucking possible. Because if I can incapacitate you, I don't have to worry about you, one, alerting the people who took me in the first place, two, hurting me, and three, alerting the people who took me in the first place. Understand that I said that twice because the fact of the matter is, if it's just you and one person, you have no worries. You've incapacitated him. Get the fuck out. Where... If it's like three or four people and they're holding you hostage, you have a fucking problem. I understand being held hostage is not a fucking joke. And not everybody who has been held hostage is a martial artist. I've never been held hostage. You know why? No one wants to hold me hostage. No one will ever find a reason to hold me hostage in my life. No one will be like, oh, we got this young martial artist who's an actor. How much money can we get for him? Nothing. Because no one knows who the hell I am. No one's going to sit there and say, oh, well, we got an American actor who's a martial artist. Um, we want 20 grand for him. <laughs> you might get 20 bucks. I'm not that damn important. The, the United States government is going to say, okay, well, what do you know about this actor? We know that he's black, Cherokee, and white. His family's poor. He's a YouTuber. We come a dime a dozen. Fuck him. You know? They're not going to put any... Oh, yeah. He's a veteran of the United States military. That might swing things in my favor, but in the end, that whole part of me being a veteran of the United States military is probably only going to give them a reason to not pay my aggressors for kidnapping. Like, well, let's see. What's his service record? He doesn't have a bad service record. He got an honorable discharge. His hip got fucked up in service. Um, he is expendable. He was infantry. So... I need to be ready to save my own ass. I understand? Incapacitating your opponent. Right here in the sternum, if a person cannot breathe, they cannot hurt you. Hitting in the throat, if a person cannot breathe, they cannot hurt you. Zip it. So, you know, you, you understand. Block, elbow. That's a short elbow. Block, pull, short elbow, and another elbow. The easier you incapacitate your opponent, the better off it's going to be for you. Now, there's the problem of adrenaline. This person you're fighting might actually live for that shit. And they know they have the tactical advantage because your hands are tied. That being the case, you have to keep that shit simple. You also have to remember that you're the one in danger. You're in more danger because your hands are tied. So, you want to keep that shit simple. Guy coming at you, boom, front kick. That would be Kung Fu, and this would be Karate. Boom! Boom! I understand that my foot touched the ground, and I recalibrated to come back. But with Kung Fu, my foot doesn't touch the ground. Boom! Boom! It never touches the ground. That way, there's no wasted motion. That also comes in a Kempo kick as well. Now, am I going to do tornado kicks with my hands tied? It could be done. And if I was outside, hell yeah, I'd do that shit. Because if I hit the ground, it's not going to hurt like this goddamn floor. Alright? Now, like I said in the beginning, if he's coming at you and he's coming on this side and you want to keep him going in that direction so that you can go in that direction, you want, bam, outside to inside crescent kick. Excuse me, inside to outside crescent kick. 
He lands this way, you run that way. Now let's say you want to do it the other way. You want to use the outside to inside crescent kick. So, he's coming. You're going to come this way to get your, 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 your leg in the position that you need for the outside to inside crescent kick. So you're stepping. You know, you're like in a wind chunk stance. Boom! I almost slipped just in case y'all missed that. So that was a fuck up. So, boom! Now he's in this way. He's over here. Now, you have options. But it's going to be hard for you to position yourself this way and run right away. So when you kick him with the outside to inside crescent kick, bang! Now he's right there and you're right here. You pretty much fucked yourself. You're going to have to run in this direction, but you've already set him on the course that he can recover and come into this direction. Now you see why I said you get him to the outside. So if he's coming and you use an inside to outside crescent kick, boom! You shift your weight, you're gone. Versus outside to inside crescent kick, boom! And he's right there. If he recovers fast, he's got you dead to rights. You try to run, he's got you. But if you do the other way, you've positioned him into the position where you can run this way while he's stumbling that way. You see how this works? This is why when your hands is bound, it is very important for you to weigh your options. Now let's say he ducks when I do this outside, um, inside to outside crossing game. He's going to duck it. He ducks it. So now he's right here. I need to be able to block and recover. I understand. So if I block this way, boom, that knee, it's going to fall short. So I don't want to use that. I'm going to block him this way. I'm going to bring this knee because it's right there. And I'm going to tuck him over. When I tuck him over, I'm going to backhand him. You know, prayer hands, boom. And if not prayer hands, one fist, one hand. Boom. So you'll see that it looks like that. Okay, I got to untie my hands. Shit. And take this damn dog that doesn't belong to me out. So give me a minute. I'm going to stop the um, YouTube broadcast, but I'm going to let Instagram keep running. So YouTube, I'll make a second part to you. Thank you very much for watching. Instagram.